What is up everybody? Craig here and I'm going to take you through the latest news and gossip surrounding Liverpool Football Club. As always, you are very welcome along. Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Drop a like on the video and of course hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Right, where to start? How about with a little bit of I told you so. Um, look, the news around Jude Bellingham to Liverpool. Now, when people see it being put in the media, people are saying, well, this was an obvious thing. This was always going to happen. Rewind back 12 to 18 months ago when I was telling everybody what I was told and I was being openly mocked and ridiculed about it. It's going to happen, like I've always said. And like I've always said during this whole journey around Jude Bellingham and when will he come to Liverpool, will he come to Liverpool, all I've ever asked is for one thing. When it happens, the people who are here mocking me and giving me all the it's never going to happen, our owners are too stingy, you're absolutely deluded, just give me some credit. That's all I ever asked for. I'm not here to laugh in people's faces or anything like that. But I've always tried to be honest on this channel. If I hear something I deem to be truthful from a reputable source, and it doesn't happen very often, I go out with it and I put my nuts on the line. Jude Bellingham was one of those things. And you will see all the regulars, you will see the Fabrizio Romanos, you will see the James Pierces, the David Ornsteins, all the top tier journalists. They will all write stories about this in the coming months as it gets closer. But everybody will forget about Little Old Anfield Agenda. This is where it started because I got an inside scoop on it. And I told everyone it would happen and it will happen. Look, I've been honest. I've said the same consistent sentence. I don't know when it will happen, but I was told that it will be his next club after he leaves Borussia Dortmund in no uncertain terms. That's what I've always said to you guys. That's where we are. And I'm just glad. Look, I could sit here and I could laugh and joke and call people out and all that stuff. I don't want to do that because ultimately... I'm a Liverpool fan. I want the best for Liverpool. In my opinion, this will be the very best for Liverpool. So ultimately, rather than bragging about it, which I will do a little bit because I'm me, let's be honest. I'm just happy. I'm just relieved that people are finally starting to look forward to Jude Bellingham maybe coming to the club. And I know that there will still be people with doubts around it. But look, I hope I can allay those a little bit as the months go by. Look at the track record. Look at Henderson speaking with him. Look at Bellingham saying he wouldn't join United. A little bits and pieces. Read between the lines and you'll see that this picture has been formed. And Liverpool will spend what it takes to get Jude Bellingham from Borussia Dortmund. And it won't be an insignificant amount. It will be probably close to 100 million pounds there or thereabouts i don't know the figures i don't know the exact ins and outs of the detail but i'm very very much looking forward to it now that being said let's not celebrate too quickly there's a lot of work to be done and there's a lot of work that needs to be done before this window closes so what can we expect well let me throw one name at you that's come up over the past few days and it's a name that will probably drag you back 12 to 18 months sander berg from Sheffield United. Now, my question here is, if Jurgen Klopp is interested in this guy, and Sports Illustrated have put out that, I think Gary Weaver was the journalist, that Liverpool are interested in bringing him in. This stumps me. This confuses me, if true. And I don't know if it is or isn't. I'm sure we'll probably find out. But if Sander Berg is what Jurgen Klopp feels is an improvement on our midfield, when we were told that there probably wasn't anybody out there who could come in and do a job long term, I'm very, very, very confused because myself, yourself and numerous other people can probably name 10, 15 footballers that would do a better job. So look, we'll wait and see what happens. I'm not going to knock Sander Burke. He is a very tidy player. Six foot four, big physical presence. But if Sander Berg was the answer, why were we waiting? Why didn't we sign him 12 to 18 months ago? That's my big flaw with this one. So look, we'll leave that and park it up. Let's move on to another player who's been linked with Liverpool recently. And there is a bit more news on this. Uh, Ishmael Benesur, the guy from AC Milan. He has turned down a new contract offer from AC Milan. Apparently his agent has said he wants a significant pay increase on the... And now you're going to be surprised by this, or maybe it was just me. He earns 33,500 quid at AC Milan. Or else that's the new contract offer. But that's the figure that was mentioned in this article. And that really did set me back. Because a move to any Premier League club. Top or bottom half. Or any club probably in the top half of Spain. You would earn significantly more than that. Like we, we speak about footballers here. And if they're less than 100 grand. We think sometimes that the club are robbing them. So imagine the offer that he could get to move to the Premier League. So I wonder... He's 24 years of age, if my memory is correct. He's somebody that has been linked to Liverpool for a little bit. 
again, I don't know if this is true or not true with regards to Liverpool's interest, but it will be a decent time if he's a little bit disenfranchised or annoyed about the AC Milan contract offer. Maybe now is the time to try and get in and turn ahead there if he is on Jurgen Klopp's list. And this list is the important part because... I'm fully on board with wanting your top targets. I get it. I understand it. And not settling is a good trait to have. But right now, we're in trouble. We're in trouble with the amount of bodies that are constantly coming up injured. And we're in trouble because we're only two games into a season. We've already dropped four points. And I know people can be reactionary, myself included. But we do need to bring in a midfielder. It is potentially the difference between us being in a title race and us being in a top four race. And surely we learned our lessons from the centre-back situation a few years ago. So look, over two weeks or so left in the window. Let's wait and see how it goes. With regards to potential players leaving the club, um, today there was an article put out that said that Liverpool will leave it late in the window to decide whether Sepp van der Berg and Nat Phillips will leave the club and where they will go. This, to me, makes absolute sense. We have a bit of a crisis at centre-back at the minute. Good news is Joe Matic was pictured in training today. Now, he wasn't doing ball work, so he was you know, just starting the process of getting back. So we're still a bit away from him being ready. Hopefully Gomez will be ready. I think he will be ready for the game coming up against Manchester United. Bobby was back training. That's good news as well. But I, I'm not surprised to hear that Liverpool are going to leave it late to make a decision on Sepp van der Berg uh, and Nat Phillips because, look, we don't know if we need the bodies or not. We've already sent Tyler Morton out on loan to Blackburn, uh, which is a good move, by the way. I think it's the right move for him, and I think it was the good long-term answer. We could have said, look, we need to keep bodies at Anfield. We need to keep players here. Keep him here, and he'll get some minutes. He'll get much more at Blackburn. So very happy for him that that was done and dusted. I'm just really quickly flying through my notes now to see if there's anything else I've missed out on. Yes, Naby Keita. Big story, potentially, this one. So a little bit... <sighs> A little bit of a tale of two tale of two stories, if you want. Um, so there's reports that said Naby Keita is unhappy and the contract negotiations are at a bit of an impasse. Now, Liverpool apparently briefed journalists to say that they're not aware of any unhappiness from Naby Keita or his agent. Um, and they, this article goes on to say that it would take a huge offer for Liverpool to consider selling Naby Keita, that they would rather let him run his contract down if he isn't going to sign a new deal than give it or than allow him to go in this window for less than a huge sum of money. I'm on the fence on this whole thing. Do I think we can't afford to lose another body in midfield right now? Oh God, yes. Yes, infinitely yes. But long term, would I sell Kader right now if an offer came in that was acceptable to the club? I'd rather sell him now than let him leave for free at the end of the season. So for me, it's either sell him now or give him a new contract. And if Liverpool are unaware that he's a bit disenfranchised, and look, sometimes I can be reactive and sometimes I will say he's not right to be annoyed. But if he sees players starting ahead of him, let's say Jordan Henderson as an example, and he is fit and available, Naby, then I can kind of understand the gripe because let's be fair, he's probably a better midfielder than Jordan Henderson. In fact, he is a better midfielder than Jordan Henderson. Henderson can do a job. Love the man. He's our captain. But I can understand it from that perspective. But I don't think he deserves a pay increase, Naby Keita, especially not a significant one. But we can't lose any more bodies in midfield. Let's be really honest about this. We're on the fence about Curtis Jones. We're not really sure how much of an impact Milner can have this season. Oxley chamberlain I think most of us think he can have a minuscule impact at best. And then you're starting to look at Fabinho, who's a bit rocky at the minute. But look, Fabinho will be just fine. I'm sure about that. Thiago, very injury prone. And then you start moving on to the youngsters like Elliot and Carvalho, who have time on their side and will come good. So look, fingers crossed we get something done before the window closes. As always, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section. If you want to catch us live, you'll find us over on our Twitch channel. The link is in the description. Thank you guys as always. Have a good one. Oh, and told you so.